One of the issues regarding the underfolder is that you can't operate the selector when it's folded. And the AK-47 is no different. Although it's easy to unfold just by pressing this button, when the underfold is on your shoulder, I can't reach the selector. My thumb can't reach the selector, so I have to use my other hand. Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to address some of the issues that North American have with the underfolder. And hopefully you'll understand its origin and its purpose. And I will also show you how to make it more user friendly, more comfortable by paracording a riser and extending the LOP. Now it's common knowledge that the AK-47 borrowed the concept from a German World War II gun, STG-44. But it's not too common knowledge that the AK-47 underfolder, which this is a direct copy of, borrowed the concept from an, even an older German gun, the MP40. So I don't know why people are comparing it to today, today's plastic, retractable in five different positions, got three different risers, and even folds to the uh, right for optics like red dot and scope. You're comparing an 80-year-old concept that the whole purpose originally was for, uh, you know, an armored carriers and the cab of trucks. That was the whole purpose of the underfolder. So today, I'm going to address some of the issues. So stick around, I'll be back. I am back. Now, the better you understand the underfolder, the better you're going to accept it. The first biggest complaint about the underfolder is poor cheek weld. I don't know why everybody's expecting a good cheek weld. It was never designed for a cheek weld. It was designed for somewhere between the chin and the cheek. So, in other words, below the cheek weld. And the problem is inherent. Look at the grandpa of the underfolder. This width is two and three eighths. The AK underfolder is two and five eighths. Yes, that is the problem with the underfolder. It is wide. It is wider, this wooden one, the width is one and then a quarter. So, it's more than one and a quarter wide than the Woodstock. So in other words, it's about or five eighths on each side wider. It pushes your face five eighths to the left, right? And if it was set at the same height as the Woodstock, it's not. If it's set at the same height as the Woodstock, you will never be able to use the iron sight. That's why it is set about one and three quarter inch lower than the top of this wood. So you could use the iron sight because your face is pushed five eighths to the left. So now why is it wide? Well, it has to be wide because it needs to clear the magazine, it needs to clear the selector, and the hand guard and that is the whole reason why the underfolder is wide and that is the problem and there's no way you can go around it okay number two it interferes with the selector when folded yes it does especially on the type 81 yes in this particular case you can't even touch the selector when it's folded and you can't you can barely touch it when when it's on your shoulder no different than the AK-47 as you see there's a cutout for the selector tab same thing you can't use the AK selector or the paddle now they did solve the problem by putting two tabs on it one on top of the selector which able to push it down and up 
but that's still a problem. Nothing you can actually do about it. That is the way it is. It folds right over the selector. Okay. Number three, this snags on clothing. Well, if you're not into competition shooting, it shouldn't matter. Number four, it wobbles up and down. Now I already explained why it wobbles up and down. It's because it's held in with two prongs and they go in two holes. Okay. If the hole is big, then it will operate smoother. The prongs will go into the hole and easier. But the downside, you'll have more wobble. And if the holes were smaller, well, guess what? To operate it, it'll be more difficult, but the prongs has to go into the smaller hole. Yes, the benefit is that you're going to get less wobble. You're never going to eliminate the wobble, okay? You're just going to get less wobble. So you might as well just live with the wobble because that's the way it is. Matter of fact, I was watching a video by Misha Ko, and he says if the wobble, if the holes for the prongs are too small, you're going to have another problem. And whereby he he snapped the folder really fast and it ended up like this. Okay. So in other words, if you have a small hole, smaller hole, you're more likely when you snap it up quickly, you're going to end up like this. But if you have a bigger hole, you're just going to snap right in place like this. See? So there are some benefit with bigger holes. Unfortunately, the downside, more wobble. So live with it. Next, short LLP. Yes, it does have short LLP, but that's only because they can, as you can tell, they can make bigger LLP, but the comm block usually don't believe in longer LLP. If you were to check the Warsaw packed average stock, they're about an inch shorter than the counterpart in NATO. And you can't convince me the soldiers in Warsaw Pact are shorter than the counterparts in NATO. No, it's only because they like their stock shorter. Because of winter warfare, they wear layers and layers of clothing and it adds on to the LOP. So they prefer it shorter. But since we're not in a winter warfare, yes, I have some ideas of how to increase the LOP. And the simple way to do it is to get yourself one of these. You can buy them from Amazon and you can also get them from AliExpress. I bought this recently for $10 to my door. Okay. This is an AK rubber pad. It works for, matter of fact, I've used it on my side folder, Type 81 side folder. Works really well. You just have to strap it in. Guess what? It also works for the wood. Like this. Just fold it like that. There you go. Isn't that fast? Isn't that cheap? Ten bucks. And you add about three quarter of an inch. It also works for the underfolder in more ways than one. Okay. You see this groove over here? right and matter of fact I had to do a little bit of modding so it would go a little higher if you look inside this groove I took out a little bit of rubber inside the groove inside the groove not outside the groove inside the groove I took a little bit of rubber so the butt would go in higher and this is how it works see you go like that. Here, let me set this down. Like that. And there it is. See, I want to push this as low as possible. So you push that in. And there you go. This adds on about an inch of to your LLP. $10 only. 
And there's another benefit too. Some people complain there's no place to put your cleaning kit in an underfolder. Well, not true. Take an SKS cleaning kit, add some thick quarter inch rubber band to it, and guess what? Slide it into the slot right here. Yes, that's exactly what I just said. It fits into the slot, turn it upside down, it won't fall off. Matter of fact, you can even fold it and there won't be an issue of that. See? The cleaning kit is still there. Now, you might say, well, an inch is too big. Well, you know what? You don't have to have an inch. If you just want a little bit of cushion, like maybe an eighth of an inch, you can do that too. Okay, you have to do a little bit of modding. See the bottom here? Take about one eighth of an inch wide, the entire length of this rubber, cut it straight down, okay, like this. Just cut it straight down. And now you can just slip it in. Not on that first one in front, but the second one behind it, like that. Now remember, pull that up. No, oh, the felt pad fell off. Okay, there you have. You can also put on the second part. Ten dollars only to your door. Now you have nice padding, rubber padding, and it's only 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 about an eighth of an inch thick. So there you have it. And yes, you can still put the cleaning kit, but you have to thicken another bit and put rubber bands and it'll stay. All right, I'm done with the LOP. Now let's talk about, lastly is that to use the underfolder, it's cold. Yes, uh, so is it cold in Siberia, but they don't usually complain about that. But there are choices, you know, we could do. Uh, I've seen people wrap it with leather. That's nice. I prefer to do it with paracord. And some of you, some of you might actually have handguard rails, cord rails, and might want to use red dot, and so you might want to put it higher. So therefore, I'm going to show you today how to paracord your stock but also to put in a riser. So I'll be back and then after that I'll show you uh, how to install a 3D riser. I'll be back. I am back. Now usually I'm in front of the camera but this time I'm going to be beside the camera and that is because I can't uh, do this uh, upside down. Um, paracorded so I have to have the camera switch to my side <clears throat> now let's go back to these uh, uh, AK uh, pads apparently there's two different types the $10 one is uh, hard rubber and this one um, don't know where I got that from but it's a soft rubber okay there's a difference between the two and obviously the hard rubber is more difficult to handle but uh, if you were to use a hair dryer on this um, for about four to five minutes it will uh, be just as soft as that well it will be pretty soft and easy to handle and you won't have any problems slipping this over the uh, wood stock before i show show you how to paracord the uh, underfolder you need to get uh, two-sided tape you need to get a this wood from uh, from your local uh, hardware store and here I'll show you what they look like uh, uh, this is what it looks like it's called a base shoe and molding and it's measure 11 16th 
of an inch height and 7 16th of a width okay and it's only a dollar 38 uh, per foot um, so you can just buy a one foot you don't need more than that if you're gonna make two now you're gonna cut that five inches wide okay and then you're gonna taper from here to here and you need a angle less than about 40 degrees maybe somewhere 35 degrees I'm not sure I just eyeballed it and what I did is I measured about one inch from the end to here and then I just cut it in an angle same for here you need a a um, not a 45 degrees you need something less than 45 degrees okay and then I painted it because I uh, the edges you cannot have uh, moisture going in okay and then I cleaned off the bottom with solvent and I also cleaned the rail um, the underfolder rail with solvent okay because the two-sided tape will be put on this wood okay and you put the whole length match the edge to the front and then cut off the excess like this just cut it off like that okay now you still gonna have the tape on the inside I'll just use a scissor and just basically cut that off like that all right now now you have to set it on the rail now most people face should be around here so what I'm gonna do uh, you can try that out on your own but what I'm gonna do is leave about three quarter of an inch to the back here and start about three quarter of an inch uh, in the front here so I'm not gonna go the whole length but you could if you want to okay uh, matter of fact you can do the whole paracording even without the rail if you want to it's the same pattern it's uh, it's my interlocking pattern okay and uh, and beauty about not only is it interlocking it looks the same whether you're looking from here or from the other side the pattern would be exactly the same so I'm going to double make double sure that that's where I want it so I'm gonna check it on my shoulder and then I'm gonna put this on and make sure that's where I want it to be yes actually it's gonna be less than three-quarter of an inch and I mean three-quarter of an inch from this cut okay I'm gonna make it like about half an inch from that cut okay so basically like this Okay, I'm going to start off an inch from here and end about um, three uh, half an inch to the back because I need to move this a little closer to the now if you're doing if you're going to put a butt pad on there then obviously you need to move this even closer okay so so it depends whether you're going to use a butt pad or not so you got to make make a, a co accommodation for that okay now uh, how long of a paracord you need you need this kind of paracord don't get thicker one than this this is the typical paracord that you buy from everywhere anywhere and uh, I'm starting off with about 16 foot of this okay okay so once you have cleaned the top rail you remove you remove the sticky and you're gonna put this like I said I was gonna do about a half I'm gonna line up the back 
half an inch from the back here where there's a cutout I'm gonna line up the back in other words like this see that I'm gonna line up the back okay and that's pretty good now I'm gonna press it down okay don't forget you need to clean the top rail and clean under the wood okay let it dry and then this is what it's going to be so before you start paracording try it out see if it catches on anything and it doesn't so it looks pretty damn good and you see you don't want any closer than half an inch uh, to the end otherwise this um, this part of the butt is going to get uh, caught in it so this is just right uh, maybe next time I'll push it a little bit further in okay um, something about when you use these pads by the way you cannot have magazine in there because it's gonna be it's gonna be about this far out it's gonna hinder the magazine okay so be aware of that alright so let's unfold it again and let's proceed with showing you how to paracord, paracord a riser. Now, like I said, I'm starting off with 16 foot. Uh, if you want to go all the way to the front here, you can. Uh, probably have to go to 18, 20 foot. But what you need to do is first set this up. You need about three feet of bend you have to bend and you have to do about three foot like that okay and and it doesn't matter if you go up or you go down it doesn't matter okay all you have to do matters is that when you pull this out the short end has to be on the left. This is the short end. Okay. It has to be on the left. And it's and it has to be, if you're gonna go all the way, obviously you're gonna be like two and a half feet. But I'm not going all the way, so I'm gonna be about, you know, just about about this. This is just about right okay now before I still need to set it up I don't not ready so I need to make a loop like this this is part of the lock it locks both ends so you need to make a loop like this remember I'm starting about an inch and then I'm gonna go that far okay so I need to do a loop the loop comes in here goes under this part and goes all the way to the end and then it double back and now you want these to be on the face side because um, well, basically it adds on to the cushion uh, of the cheek wheel now I like to use scotch tape so it doesn't move around when I'm working on it. You know, that's the last thing I want to do is have these things uh, move around on me. So I just use, use scotch tape. And I uh, do it like that. And I also do it on this side because I don't want that thing to keep flopping around while I'm working. Okay, so like that. Now you need to have this on the side. Make sure you push the riser down, stays down, and that's basically where I want to be. Okay, so this is the way you have it all set up. There's a loop, goes underneath these two, and then it goes all the way down to the butt, comes all the way back, this adds on to the padding of uh, your cheek. 
or actually um, yeah, lower cheek. So now I can start because I want to start about an inch forward of the riser. Okay. Uh, yes, you can go all the way to the start. You just, you just probably need more. Now, this method has interlocking. So what that means is that all these strand, that vertical strand, is all interlocked and it doesn't move. And you have to pull them tight each time you do this. Uh, the, the better you do it, the less chance it will move. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Now, the first thing you do <clears throat> when this is up like this, you want the interlock to be on the underneath, and then you push this loop down, okay, and then it comes in like this. So, if this comes from underneath, okay, then it needs to go underneath and then come on top. Okay. So, pull it. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now, since it came from the top, okay, it just came from the top, now it goes back into the top. Make sure it's nice and snug. Make sure it's close together. Okay. Now you've seen it came from the bottom. Now it goes in the bottom. Under, over. Pull it nice and tight, nice and snug. Okay. Don't worry about the ends right now because these loop will become another additional lock. It will also lock sideways. This locks the bottom and those, that one and that one will lock the top. <coughs> Excuse me. Now this one came from the top. It goes back in the top. Okay. Pull them, pull them out. Now, when you're pulling them this time, be careful that you don't pull your, ri your riser out of position. Okay, like that. Okay. All right. Now I'm ready to climb up the riser. Okay. This has come from the bottom, so it goes back in the bottom. And it goes over the top, under, over. Now you have to be a little careful with your pulling. Don't pull it out of position. Now you're climbing up the ramp. It came over, now you're going over and under. came from under, see these interlocking? It works really well. Now it came from under, it goes under and over. Each time after you pull it, make sure these interlock are straight. That is staying straight, it's staying at the bottom, and it's connecting to each other uh, with a proper tension. Okay, just don't pull it out and figure it it's over. Okay, now I'm gonna go, it came from on top, now I need to go over and under. Get there, go there, yes, like that. Okay. 
Okay. I'm climbing the ramp. Remember, always line up these interlocks. And now you see it's starting to look shaped. And always make sure that these two strands are nice and horizontal. That adds to the cushion under, over, into the loop. snug. Now over, under, through the loop. Okay, at some point I'm going to have to edit most of this out. I think you guys generally get the idea by now. And here is the reason why you need this gradual incline rather than a sharp 45 degrees incline. Uh, because it would not work well down here if it's too sharp. Okay, so, so I'm going to have to stop here, and then I'm going to do here, and then I'll come back uh, showing you how to do the uh, bottom uh, of the ramp. Okay, let's, uh, let me do this first. So I think you guys get the drift now. If the paracord is coming, coming from underneath you go back underneath through the top through the loop and interlock now see isn't that beautiful that looks great don't you think okay so now I have to stop doing the video and make sure that this stays on the uh, metal rail and not on the wood okay now, like I said, don't worry about the ends. Uh, I will lock both ends uh, at the end uh, when I get there. But generally, you see how, how it's progressing. So I'll be back uh, when I get to this point. Now, once you get halfway, use a punch and start pulling some of these strands and at the bottom to make sure that it's nice and tight. If there's anything loose, then work your way back or work your way forward and make sure this stuff is nice and tight and the bottom interlock is nice and straight. Now, once you get to the edge of the slope, you need to tie a string, okay? Now, I use white, but of course, you would be using black and uh, the reason why you need to tie a string is you need to hold the strand or the uh, paracord from falling down the slope and so therefore it would be like this I would uh, let's see where, is, where are you right there right there you will make a loop around each new one. Okay, so let me tighten that up. And, and then this can go around it. Okay, and now I'm gonna do another one. Okay, remember if the paracord came from underneath, it goes back underneath and over and then into the loop. Now you're starting to head down the slope. going to tend to go down the slope okay and this is why you put you need that string right here with the needle you have tied around one of the strand and now you're going around 
every new one. So the next one with the string and the needle, I'm just going to go under and come back up. And this way, it's, as you can see, and I'm, I'm pulling it, it pulls closer so it stays in its place. Okay, so I'm going to make sure this is nice and tight. It's actually, I can see it's not very tight. Because you can see this is loose. So I got to make sure it's nice and tight. Now I got to pull. I got to pull this bottom part. Make sure it's nice and tight. Then go back up. Yeah, like that. You see, it's like that. And now, I gotta make sure the string is pulling on it closer. Okay. You see, it's now just gonna sew right through. That's it. I'm gonna sew the last two strand together. It's tight. It came from the top, so it goes back in the top. The whole reason why I'm using uh, sewing thread so it doesn't work its way down the ramp. Okay. Now again, make sure this part is nice and tight. And make sure this top part is pushed against okay and this one way this is the reason why I have to have sewing threads because I need to keep sewing the top part with the one previously so that's the only way it's gonna stop see see how it's working I'm actually pulling it towards the center and I'll do it another time just to make sure it's it stays okay see it's bunched up now now I got that locked in now I'm gonna keep going down because this came from underneath go around on top and into the loop. Yeah, I gotta make, make sure it's nice and snug. And I'm gonna push this back up. That's it, like that. Okay, now once make sure the bottom is all straight and it is straight and snug I use a lot of force to make sure it's nice and snug make sure it's holding it and again I'm gonna take the back and sew that onto the previous paracord came from the top so I go back on the top over through the loop make sure this is straight nice and tight you have to use a tool to push it back Nice and tight. 
use the tool, push it back up, use the sewing thread needle, and sew that to the other in the back. It's not going to look too pretty, but it'll do the job. Now remember, you would not be using a white. I use a white thread so you could see what I'm doing. You would actually use uh, whatever color uh, your paracord is. Go back down. Over. And through the loop. Make sure it's nice and tight. Always use a tool to push this back up. Make sure this is nice and lined up, nice and tight. There's no possible way this is going to move. I'm going to move again. I'm going to use the sewing thread and I'm going to sew this to the previous one or two. Oh, and I was getting a little difficult because of the buttstock. Okay, now you see this, this little gap here. You need to make sure it's it's in that and now it goes over and then comes back through the loop. I'm almost near the bottom. Okay, now use the tool and push that back up. I don't want the gap there, so I need to push it back up. Okay, I'm going to use this thread again. I'm going to sew through the last strand, paracord, and the bottom. Everything is nice and straight. Came from the bottom, go back to the bottom. Now once you get to the bottom, you don't need to sew it because you're already there. come off and I'm almost one more strand one more left go over and under and I'm almost there okay Okay, so there, there it is. It looks pretty good. Back here, of course, it looks like a dog's breakfast because it's uh, it was uh, done in white thread. If it's the same color, it wouldn't be so obvious. Uh, now I'm gonna have to take this and just basically tie the loose thread around the needle. loop around the needle about three or four times okay that's good and then pull the needle through and yep and that's it i'm gonna clip that oh the start of this one clip that uh, it's still too long let's clip that okay so there we are, we're not finished yet, 
Now you start removing the the tape which was holding this locking loop at the end and as you see I'm right at the edge of this hinge part and I actually don't want it to touch there it is just push it back in right and I, I also need to remove this scotch tape from the front it was just there to uh, hold uh, these loose locking uh, ends so it doesn't uh, interfere with the okay all right now what I'm going to do is how to lock this in it's um, pretty uh, simple the first thing you have to do is lock this loop and before you do that make sure using a tool that even though originally you were nice and tight by the time you work your way in you could have loosened it so therefore you need to make sure that it's nice and tight no. like, like that okay now once you got that done you need to pull this loop in to lock the front okay so here I'll, I'll do that and to do that you need to pull this in so in other words this part is going to come in and lock the front so I'm going to put this in as leverage you know I'm in a kind of awkward position so uh, how do I do this uh, okay I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna be on this side okay and watch this part as I pull this in okay. I'm pulling I'm pulling the bottom part which will bring the loop in See that's coming in. Make sure it's okay. make sure it hasn't come loose. Okay, you see that it's coming. Okay. I don't believe it's locked well enough. So I'm going to have to use this, okay, just loop it around and I need to make sure that the front is really locked in, okay, pull it nice and tight, okay, now you see the front is nicely locked in, now I got to lock the back in. Of course, the 16 foot is too long, but that's okay. I'd rather be too long than short. Now, you need to lock yourself into this loop. And I'm gonna go into this loop. Okay, so like this. So you see this loop? Now, I'm going to pull the front, and it's going to lock in the back. I'm going to use this as a help to pull this in, and watch this loop get smaller and smaller. Okay, now how much of this do I want to go inside? I probably want it to go about this much okay to be locked in about about a couple of inch from the uh, from the end so I probably want to stop right there so let me see so I'm just gonna do like that and let me continue pulling this okay 
watch that move in. Yeah, well, off camera, I had to loosen some of these uh, paracord because it was just being too tight. It couldn't go in. So anyway, so here, here it is. I'm going to try to pull this knot. Basically, this would be like a knot. I'll pull it in uh, about an inch in. That would be enough to lock it in. So here, as you can see, I'm going to start pulling this part. And as I pull that part that loop you see is starting to come in and it's going to lock this part inside like this and I'm going to try to pull it make sure it has enough room for it to, to go over the hump like that Yeah, I did a little tight. Next time, don't do it as tight as I did. So I'm going to try to pull it in. It's just not moving. It's getting hung up in this knot, so I'm just going to have to pull it over. starting to come in. You see it's starting to move it? Okay. So it's right up to here and that should be actually good enough. Okay. You see it's up to here. It was just trying to get over the first. Now, so it's like about two inch in. Now this extra strand, I can pull it back up and tighten that loop. See, it moved in. And now I'm going to pull it in some more. There it is. You see, this part is starting to move in, right? Right. Okay. So now I've got both sides locked in. And this shouldn't have any problem going in. So, make sure it's nice and straight. Okay, this is where this loop came and came as far as here. You can see it. Let's see if I could just move it and start spreading them out a little bit more. And it will be easier. Okay, there it is. So, we got to this part. All you have to do is cut this end and cut that end. And now I'm going to use a lighter and burn each of these ends. Okay, now once you snip the ends, just burn uh, the end to lock it in. Okay, same thing for this uh, front. Make sure it's completely, okay, that's good. Now, doesn't this paracord riser look beautiful? It's interlocking and even the ends lock in place. This is what the back side looks like. Now, ignore that because, like I said, I did it in white. So you would see my sewing. Pretty bad job, but that's what you're supposed to do is to hold these things in place. Matter of fact, it looks so beautiful, I don't feel like taking it off and to demonstrate the 3D printed uh, riser. But here, I'll show you what it looks like uh, folded. It clears the magazine. And there it is. 
still lots of room and it doesn't cut into the uh, butt the top of the butt it doesn't looks very pretty okay matter of fact like I said it looks so nice that I don't feel like disassembling it so I could uh, show you how to install a 3d printed riser this 3d printed riser I bought from uh, classified ad that's that sells gun and gun parts not a forum if you're in Canada you know which one it is I paid uh, it uh, sells for $35 uh, shipped to you and is 3d printed and uh, he did tell me that he sanded one side uh, he didn't really have to and he said it was a lot of work um, the um, I think uh, the fineness uh, is fine enough it would be you know would be it's pretty good so you don't I don't think it needed to be uh, uh, sanded down at all um, matter of fact uh, the lines would be okay if you wanted to paint it so this is what it looks like it has four nuts on the inside and four Phillips heads on the outside the cheek side and this is what it looks like looking from the back uh, there's two plates locking plates at the bottom and there's one rail well actually one cheek riser on top now the only suggestion I would have made for them is to make a riser like this instead of that because this riser is centered and it, I'd rather have it to the right so your face would go more towards the right this pushes you more towards the left okay that's the only suggestion I would make to disassemble this so if you're lefty you would put it on this side right correct so first remove all four screws they're all the same size I don't know what they are but if I find out I'll, I'll text it uh, into the video Okay, to disassemble it, you remove the four screws. Okay, and you could remove, oops, you could remove the four nuts. Okay, to disassemble this, you pull the locking plate, wiggle it actually. And you can feel it's coming down. See, it's coming down. Wiggle it down. There it is. And wiggle this next part down. There it's it. Okay. So this is the bottom of the uh, cheek riser. Okay. There's two slots for two of the locking plates. And there is a difference between the two locking plates. You can see one squared off on the inside and the other one is rounded right the rounded is goes on the outside to match the outside rail okay so this is where it goes it fits pretty snug don't force it there it is you put that in about that about that position if you're a lefty you would put it there and then put this round on the inside like that install the two lower screws not all the way and remember on the other side there's a uh, nuts yeah, stop about uh, one eighth, one sixteenth to one eighth. Just enough to grab it. Okay. Now, to put the uh, riser in, they go into the slot. 
hook up the back side make sure it's in there but don't slide it in yet push it forward and start tilting it in okay oh here I'll do it again I think I'm off camera oh, let me remove the magazine this way you can okay, do that again put the locking plates into the back push it forward but not all the way down and start straightening it up like this and then then forcing it down now on the other side is a for the nut and it fits into to the back and then screw it in again don't put it all the way in actually at this point you can actually start putting a lock lock tight on the nut on the nuts and so they suggest you put put it in make sure the nuts seated properly after you lock tight it now you can go ahead and screw it all the way in okay that's what it looks like same thing put a dab of uh, lock tight on this Make sure it's set in properly, seated properly. And now, screw it in all the way. Now put Loctite on all four of them. Do not over tighten. After all, they are made of 3D. You could actually break them. Okay. Yes, seem to be nice. It's not sliding back and forth. And uh, let me check to see if it interferes. Oops. It has no problem clearing. Looks pretty nice. Okay. Now remember, don't get too close to the back, otherwise you're gonna hit that uh, the butt plate. Okay. That looks pretty good. I think for thirty-five dollars, I think you're better off uh, if you don't want to do um, paracord. That's not a bad alternative. It looks pretty sharp too. Let me see if I was a left hand shooter. How does it feel? It feels pretty good. So there you have it. You have a paracord riser, a 3D printed riser, and uh, I hope you have a better understanding of uh, the uh, underfolder. So uh, thank you very much for joining me. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you.